I was asked by one of my subscribers if I came to a conclusion about the Arizona water shortage after having a, an interview and uh, doing some digging, putting out a couple of videos on the water issue here. And yeah, I, I came to a conclusion. Um, some of it I'm real clear on, some of it I'm not so clear. Um, the first conclusion that I have is that we have a source problem. Um, not really so much a usage problem yet, and I'll explain that. And I can kind of explain it with this chart here. And this chart shows water usage for Arizona since the 1950s. And you can see it hasn't changed. What has changed is the mix, who's using it. So, you know, the blue lines down on the bottom, that's agricultural use. And you can see that water use for agriculture is going down, down, down. But it's being made up by industrial and domestic use. So what's the solution? So it's clear that we're not using any more water than we have since back then, um, but we can actually cut back our agricultural use just through technology, getting away from flood irrigation and, uh, and going with drip. And that increases their yield and greatly reduces the amount of water used for agriculture. Um, I don't know how expensive that is. The last thing we need is uh, to pay $9 for a head of lettuce. And uh, so, you know, that has to be looked at. There's going to have to be a serious effort to move forward with those type of technologies. The other thing is, is water use in general for cities like, well, pretty much most of the cities here in the valley. You can see behind me here all that grass. Um, it's pretty clear, one, we don't need that, and two, we just can no longer afford to have these neighborhoods that have all these lawns. And, you know, you've got nice sidewalks here, nice walking paths, and uh, all this grass has to be watered by the HOA. And if we get to a class three emergency, they're gonna tell them they gotta change this like tomorrow, and your HOA is gonna hit you with a huge special assessment. There's grant money out there that can help them, and uh, nobody seems to know it's out there. So. The, you know, the state, federal government has to do a much better job of getting the word out that there's grant money so that you can convert to desert scape or synthetic grass. Now, you can't depend on people just finding it on their own. So that's a big failure for governments and municipalities for not making that, making that known, but that's typical government for you. Now, as far as the source, you know, we started dug canals years and years ago to bring water out of the uh, Colorado River and uh, so did California and so did Nevada. Nevada does an excellent job at water conservation. The water they use they put right back in the lake but you've seen the lake, the reservoir, there's no water in it and uh, um, even though between Nevada and Arizona we're using about the same amount of water as we did you know 50 years ago um, the Colorado River just can't handle it anymore. It doesn't have enough water feeding it. I don't know a lot about California's water use. Um, you know, they have just as a high percentage of agricultural use as we do, but you've got uh, too many people, too many hands in the pot, and, uh, and we're just draining that river, so that's a problem. So even if we can conserve like crazy, that's gonna make us be okay for 50 years. That's not very comforting to me. Do I think Arizona's gonna turn into a, just a dried up desert and dust is gonna come out of our taps for water? No, do I think housing's gonna collapse because we don't have enough water? No, uh, but th we'll have limits on growth, that's for sure. Um, and it'll be not so much in the metro areas down here, but in the outlying areas. For example, Rio Verde uh, never should have been developed. Um, they don't have enough water out there, they're all they're on wells, septic tanks, the wells are going dry. City of Scottsdale is no longer giving them water. And that story can kind of be repeated with different cities around Arizona as well. Uh, Prescott, like Biscuit, it's uh, running out of water. Same reason, um, it's growing like crazy. Um, we have cycles where we get lots of rain and maybe we'll get lucky in the Colorado River and our, uh, our dams will fill up again. But this year we've got a weather pattern that's showing that we're going to be dry once again for the third year in a row with, uh, I think it's La Nina, not El Nino, going to be wetter in the Pacific Northwest and uh, I'm hoping some of that snow 
comes down to Colorado and then we have a record snowfall in Colorado. But you can't depend on the source. And in looking at how they analyzed how much yield we were going to get out of the Colorado River, nobody really ever agreed on that as far back as 1925. You know, is there 18 million acre feet uh, available in that river or was it 12? Uh, they said that the average is 18 million feet, but the research shows that even back then, the experts were saying, no, it's not 18. That, that's when it's at its fullest, it's 18. It's actually 12. So if you're off by 6 million feet, then that's a lot of water and a lot of shortages. And we've distributed that water so many places that it doesn't even get to Mexico. Now, the other sources from what I've seen and what I've read and, and talked to people is uh, desalinization. They all point to Israel. Israel's pr providing a lot of water through desalinization. Well, it uh, takes a long time to build those plants. And then the cost of water is in its delivery. Water in itself is free, but getting it from where the source is, to me, it's gonna cost money and desalinization. is gonna make water incredibly expensive. Uh, they're in talks now to try and find a solution down in uh, Sea Cortez, down by Rocky Point in Mexico. We'll see how that goes, see how much that costs. But that, like everything else in government, they're going to drag their feet. Look at California. They have 10 desalination plants on the books to build. But they've all been stymied by environmental concerns or just the simple fact that people that live near the ocean don't want to look out and see a big water plant. So that, you know, that's not going to get solved anytime soon. So what are they going to do for water? We can build a pipeline that hauls oil all the way from Alaska down to the United States, but yet we can't seem to build a pipeline that draws water from the Mississippi. And is that a good long-term solution, or are we just going to drain the Mississippi? <laughs> you know, it's our turn to drain your river now. So there's no real answers, except that I'm not in a panic about it, but I think people need, uh, and by people uh, are, our state government and our municipalities need to take this very seriously and start cutting back now on outdoor usage. Even driving down to where I'm at right now, I see sprinklers going off in the front yards, sprinklers going off in the greenways through these through these neighborhoods, and we just don't we just don't need that. It's pretty, uh, but we don't need it. And we could probably do a better job of capturing these monsoon storms that we have. We've We've already hit our yearly total of rain in Phoenix um, this summer, and uh, which is only seven inches. But that's hard water to, to capture. It runs off. We have a pretty good system for managing the floodwaters to keep manage, you know, flooding neighborhoods. But some neighborhoods will tell you that doesn't work very well. And it goes into these catch basins, and then it just soaks into the ground and evaporates. So if we could capture some of that water, that would... That would help, uh, but it's not going to make up for what's going on with the Colorado. So that's what I see going on with the water shortage and, uh, and what we need to do and what our cities and counties need to do. And I'll continue to update you as I see and read more about this water issue. Thanks for watching.